Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Dr. G. N. Ramesh. I am a medical gastroenterologist and a lead consultant in medical gastroenterology at Aster Med City Kochi. Now, in a very advanced case, the third pillar. We have done. Uh, we have gone through all that we had mentioned in the algorithm for refractory GERD, but should a patient not be responding to that or if the patient has some other indications for surgery, I think the third pillar becomes important and that is surgical treatment. So the question is, when should I offer my patient with GERD surgery? Not all patients will do well with surgery, let me tell you. I have to be convinced in my mind that number one, this patient has got symptoms because of GERD, acid reflux. Number two, I also need to be convinced that this patient does not have any other comorbid features which may bring down the effect of surgery. Because I don't want to have a patient who has undergone surgery with great hopes and ends up not responding or not having good relief. That would be a disaster. The third one is, I should be convinced that there is a structural problem which is responsible for reflux. So therefore, who are the best candidates for surgical therapy? The best candidates for surgical therapy are number one, patients who have been put on medical therapy, but for some reason, have not tolerated the medical therapy well. In my experience, I have seen the odd patient who have responded adversely to PPIs. PPIs are generally considered to be safe, but there may be an odd patient who, who has an allergy to uh, the uh, 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 proton pump inhibitors or has got other problems that may may restrict or limit the use of proton pump inhibitors. So therefore, if a patient has got side effects because of medical therapy, that would be an indication for surgery, provided I have documented that the symptoms which this patient has is because of reflux. Second, a patient who has demonstrated poor compliance with medical therapy. If my patient is not prepared to take treatment on a regular basis, he is a traveler, he has to carry the medicines, he often forgets it. This would be one of the criteria for selection of patients for surgery. Number three, we do get patients today, thanks to all the what has come out in the internet about adverse effects of PPIs, to for which the evidence is actually very limited or not there. But still we get patients who are concerned about or wish to discontinue chronic medical therapy. The idea of taking lifelong, having to take lifelong therapy is not attractive or repulsive. These are patients also who be candidates for surgical. As I mentioned, one of the indications is the presence of a structural abnormality like a significant hiatus hernia. The hiatus hernia could be large, moderate size, but even sometimes patients with small hiatus hernia may be severely symptomatic. Volume regurgitation. Patient is waking up at night with water brush and all that he or she eats the previous night keeps coming out, come, coming up into the mouth that is called volume regurgitation. Of course, if the patient is not interested in medical therapy and demands surgical therapy, we need to offer surgical therapy, provided we have explained the pros and cons of surgery very well. You could have a patient with a refractory GERD who's on maximal PPI dose. Maybe you would have tried pro, uh, prokinetics as well, some antacids at night, but still has got demonstrated abnormal pH test 
on manu or on, on ph metry uh, when we do the uh, the 24 hour ph studies that would also be an indication for surgical therapy and the last indication not necessarily acid reflux even alkali reflux also demonstrated or diagnosed alkali reflux also would be an indication for surgery. 